Beyonce Giselle Knowles Carter, born September 4, 1981, is an American singer, songwriter, and businesswoman. Personal life. Marriage and children. A woman stands next to a man who is performing using a microphone. Beyonce performing on the I Am. Tour with Jay-Z, whom she married in 2008. In 2002, Beyoncé and Jay-Z collaborated on the song O3 Bonnie and Clyde, which appeared on his seventh album The Blueprint 2, The Gift and the Curse, 2002. Beyoncé appeared as Jay-Z's girlfriend in the music video for the song, fueling speculation about their relationship. On April 4, 2008, Beyoncé and Jay-Z married without publicity. As of April 2014, the couple had sold a combined 300 million records together. They are known for their private relationship, although they have appeared to become more relaxed since 2013. Both have acknowledged difficulty that arose in their marriage after Jay Z had an affair. Beyonce miscarried around 2010 or 2011, describing it as the saddest thing she had ever endured. She returned to the studio and wrote music to cope with the loss. In April 2011, Beyonce and Jay Z traveled to Paris to shoot the album cover for Four, and she unexpectedly became pregnant in Paris to die in August. The couple attended the 2011 MTV Video Music Awards, at which Beyonce performed Love on Top and ended the performance by revealing she was pregnant. Her appearance helped that year's MTV Video Music Awards become the most watched broadcast in MTV history, pulling in 12.4 million viewers. The announcement was listed in Guinness World Records for most tweets per second recorded for a single event on Twitter, receiving 8,868 tweets per second and Beyoncé pregnant was the most googled phrase the week of August 29, 2011. On January 7, 2012, Beyoncé gave birth to a daughter, Blue Ivy, at Lenox Hill Hospital in New York City. Following the release of Lemonade, which included the single Sorry, in 2016, speculations arose about Jay-Z's alleged infidelity with a mistress referred to as Becky. John Perales in the New York Times pointed out that many of the accusations were aimed specifically and recognizably at him. Similarly, Rob Sheffield of Rolling Stone noted the lines suck on my balls, I've had enough were an unmistakable hint that the lyrics revolve around Jay-Z. On February 1, 2017, she revealed on her Instagram account that she was expecting twins. Her announcement gained over 6.3 million likes within eight hours, breaking the world record for the most liked image on the website at the time. On July 13, 2017, Beyonce uploaded the first image of herself and the twins onto her Instagram account, confirming their birth date as a month prior, on June 13, 2017, with the post becoming the second most liked on Instagram. Behind her own pregnancy announcement, the twins, a daughter named Rumi and a son named Sir, were born at Ronald Reagan UCLA. Medical Center in California via Caesarean section. She wrote of her pregnancy and its aftermath in the September 2018 issue of Vogue, in which she had full control of the cover, shot at Hammerwood Park by photographer Tyler Mitchell. Early Life Beyoncé Giselle Knowles was born on September 4, 1981, in Houston to Celestine Tina Knowles, née Beyoncé, a hairdresser and salon owner, and Matthew Knowles, a Xerox sales manager. Tina is Louisiana Creole and Matthew is African American. Beyoncé's younger sister, Solange Knowles, is also a singer and a former backup dancer for Destiny's Child. Solange and Beyoncé are the first sisters to have both had number one solo albums. Beyoncé's maternal grandparents, Loomis Albert Beyoncé and Agnes Duran, daughter of Odelia Broussard and Eugene Derwin, were French-speaking Louisiana Creoles, with roots in New Iberia. She is a descendant of Acadian militia officer Joseph Broussard, who was exiled to French Louisiana after the expulsion of the Acadians, and of the French military officer and Abenaki chief Jean Vincent Diabody, Baron de Saint-Castin. She has additional Breton heritage. Beyoncé's fourth great-grandmother, Marie-Françoise Trahan, was born in 1774 in Bangor, located on Belle Isle, France. Trahan was a daughter of Acadians who had taken refuge on Belle Isle after the Acadian expulsion. The estates of Brittany had divided the lands of Belle Isle to distribute them among 78 other Acadian families and the already settled inhabitants. The Trahan family lived on Belle Isle for over 10 years before migrating to Louisiana, where she married a Broussard descendant. Beyoncé researched her ancestry and discovered that she is descended from a slave owner who married his slave. Her mother is also of distant Irish, Jewish, Spanish, Chinese, and Indonesian ancestry. Beyoncé also has Belgian ancestry from Hainaut Province, Wallonia, and is related to a former mayor of Freud Chapel, Belgium. 
Beyonce was raised Methodist and attended St. John's United Methodist Church in Houston. As her mother's family was Catholic, on Christmas Eve her family attended Midnight Mass at St. Mary of the Purification Catholic Church. She went to St. Mary's Catholic Montessori School in Houston and enrolled in dance classes there. Her singing ability was discovered when dance instructor Darlette Johnson began humming a song and Beyonce finished it, able to hit the high-pitched notes. Beyonce's interest in Music and performing continued after winning a school talent show at age seven, singing John Lennon's Imagine to beat 15-16-year-olds. In the fall of 1990, Beyoncé enrolled in Parker Elementary School, a music magnet school in Houston, where she performed with the school's choir. She also attended the high school for the performing and visual arts and later Alif Elsik High School. Beyoncé was also a member of the choir at St. John's United Methodist Church where she sang her first solo and was a soloist for two years. Career. Career beginnings. When Beyonce was eight, she met Latavia Roberson at an audition for an all-girl entertainment group. They were placed into a group called Girls' Time with three other girls and rapped and danced on the talent show circuit in Houston. After seeing the group, R&B producer Arne Frager brought them to his Northern California studio and placed them in Star Search, the largest talent show on national TV at the time. Girls Time failed to win, and Beyoncé later said the song they performed was not good to in 1995. Beyoncé's father, Matthew, resigned from his job to manage the group. The move reduced the family's income by half, and Beyoncé's parents were forced to sell their house and cars and move into separated apartments. Matthew cut the original lineup to four and the group continued performing as an opening act for other established R&B girl groups. The girls auditioned before record labels and were finally signed to Elektra Records, moving to Atlanta Records briefly to work on their first recording, only to be cut by the company. This put further strain on the family, and Beyoncé's parents separated. On October 5, 1995, Dwayne Wiggins' Grassroots Entertainment signed the group. In 1996, the girls began recording their debut album under an agreement with Sony Music, the Knowles family reunited, and shortly after, the group got a contract with Columbia Records with the assistance of Columbia talent scout Teresa LaBarbera White's. 1997-2002, Destiny's Child Main article, Destiny's Child Beyoncé, center, at the final lineup of Destiny's Child, performing during their 2005 Destiny Fulfilled and Lovin' It concert tour. The group changed their name to Destiny's Child in 1996, based upon a passage in the Book of Isaiah. In 1997, Destiny's Child released their major label debut song Killing Time on the soundtrack to the 1997 film Men in Black. In November, the group released their debut single and first major hit, No, No, No. They released their self-titled debut album in February 1998, which established the group as a viable act in the music industry. The group released their multi-platinum second album, The Writings on the Wall, in 1999. The record features songs such as Bills, 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 the group's first number one single, Jumpin' Jumpin' and Say My Name, which became their most successful song at the time and would remain one of their signature songs. Say My Name won the Best R&B Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocals and the Best R&B Song at the 43rd Annual Grammy Awards. The Writings on the Wall sold more than 8 million copies worldwide. During this time, Beyoncé recorded a duet with Mark Nelson, an original member of Boys Two Men, on the song After All Is Said and Done for the soundtrack to the 1999 film, The Best Man. The remaining band members recorded Independent Women Part 1, which appeared on the soundtrack to the 2000 film Charlie's Angels. It became their best charting single, topping the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 chart for 11 consecutive weeks to die in early 2001. While Destiny's Child was completing their third album, Beyoncé landed a major role in the MTV made-for-television film, Carmen, a hip-hop era, starring alongside American actor Mackay Pfeiffer. Set in Philadelphia, the film is a modern interpretation of the 19th-century opera Carmen by French composer Georges Bizet. When the third album Survivor was released in May 2001, Luckett and Roberson filed a lawsuit claiming that the songs were aimed at them. The album debuted at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200, with first-week sales of 663,000 copies sold. The album spawned other number one hits, Brutilicious and the title track, Survivor, the latter of which earned the group a Grammy. Award for Best R&B Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocals After releasing their holiday album Eight Days of Christmas in October 2001, the group announced a hiatus to further pursue solo careers. 
In July 2002, Beyoncé made her theatrical film debut, playing Foxy Cleopatra alongside Mike Myers in the comedy film Austin Powers in Gold Member, which spent its first weekend atop the U.S. box office and grossed $73 million. Beyoncé released Work It Out as the lead single from its soundtrack album, which entered the top 10 in the U.K., Norway, and Belgium to in 2003. Beyoncé starred opposite Cuba Gooding Jr. in the musical comedy The Fighting Temptations as Lily, a single mother with whom. Gooding's character falls in love, the film received mixed reviews from critics, but grossed $30 million in the U.S. Beyoncé released Fighting Temptation as the lead single from the film's soundtrack album, with Missy Elliott, MC Light, and Free, which was also used to promote the film. Another of Beyoncé's contributions to the soundtrack, Summertime, fared better on the U.S. charts. 2003-2007, Dangerously in Love, Birthday, and Dreamgirls. A woman, flanked by two male dancers, holds a microphone in one hand as she dances. Beyoncé performing Baby Boy, which spent nine consecutive weeks at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Beyoncé's first solo recording was a feature on Jay-Z's song O3 Bonnie and Clyde that was released in October 2002, peaking at number four on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 chart. On June 14, 2003, Beyoncé premiered songs from her first solo album Dangerously in Love during her first solo concert and the pay-per-view television special, Ford Presents Beyoncé Knowles, Friends and Family. Live from Ford's 100th anniversary celebration in Dearborn, Michigan, the album was released on June 24, 2003. After Michelle Williams and Kelly Rowland had released their solo efforts, the album sold 317,000 copies in its first week, debuted atop the Billboard 200, and has since sold 11 million copies worldwide. The album's lead single, Crazy in Love, featuring Jay-Z, became Beyoncé's first number one single as a solo artist in the U.S. The single Baby Boy also reached number one, and singles, Me, Myself and I and Naughty Girl, both reached the top five. The album earned Beyoncé a then-record-tying five awards at the 46th Annual Grammy Awards, Best Contemporary R&B Album, Best Female R&B Vocal Performance for Dangerously in Love 2, Best R&B Song and Best Rap Slash Sun Collaboration for Crazy in Love, and Best R&B Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocals for The Closer I Get to You with Luther Vandross. During the ceremony, she performed with Prince. In November 2003, she embarked on the Dangerously in Love tour in Europe and later toured alongside Missy Elliott and Alicia Keys for the Verizon Ladies' first tour in North America. On February 1, 2004, Beyoncé performed the American National Anthem at Super Bowl 38 at the Reliance Stadium in Houston, Texas, after the release of Dangerously in Love. Beyoncé had planned to produce a follow-up album using several of the leftover tracks. However, this was put on hold so she could concentrate on recording Destiny Fulfilled, the final studio album by Destiny's Child, released on November 15, 2004, in the U.S. and peaking at number two on the Billboard 200, Destiny Fulfilled included the singles Lose My Breath and Soldier, which reached the top five on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Destiny's Child embarked on a worldwide concert tour, Destiny Fulfilled, and Lovin' It sponsored by McDonald's Corporation, and performed songs such as No, 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 Survivor, Say My Name, Independent Women and Lose My Breath. In addition to renditions of the group's recorded material, they also performed songs from each singer's solo careers, including numbers from Dangerously in Love. And during the last stop of their European tour, in Barcelona on June 11, 2005, Roland announced that Destiny's Child would disband following the North American leg of the tour. The group released their first compilation album, Number Ones, on October 25, 2005, in the U.S., and accepted a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in March 2006 that the group has sold 60 million records worldwide. Beyoncé's second solo album Birthday was released on September 4, 2006, in the U.S., to coincide with her 25th birthday. IT sold 541,000 copies in its first week and debuted atop the Billboard 200, becoming Beyoncé's second consecutive number one album in the United States. The album's lead single Deja Vu, featuring Jay-Z, reached the top five on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. The second international single Irreplaceable was a commercial success worldwide, reaching number one in Australia. Hungary, Ireland, New Zealand and the United States. Birthday also produced three other singles, Ring the Alarm, Get Me Bodied and Green Light, released in the United Kingdom only. A Woman Stands with a Microphone Beyoncé performing during the Beyoncé Experience Tour in 2007 
At the 49th Annual Grammy Awards, 2007, Birthday was nominated for five Grammy Awards, including Best Contemporary R&B Album, Best Female R&B Vocal Performance for Ring the Alarm and Best R&B Song and Best Rap Slash Sun Collaboration for Deja Vu. The Freemasons Club mix of Deja Vu without the rap was put forward in the Best Remix Recording, Non-Classical Category. Birthday won the award for Best Contemporary R&B Album. The following year, Birthday received two nominations for Record of the Year for Irreplaceable and Best Pop Collaboration with Vocals for Beautiful Liar, with Shakira also receiving a nomination for Best Compilation Soundtrack Album for Motion Pictures, Television or Other Visual Media for her appearance on Dreamgirls. Music from the Motion Picture, 2006 her first acting role of 2006 was in the comedy film The Pink Panther starring opposite Steve Martin, grossing $158.8 million at the box office worldwide. Her second film Dreamgirls, the film version of the 1981 Broadway musical loosely based on The Supremes, received acclaim from critics and grossed $154 million internationally to Diana. She starred opposite Jennifer Hudson, Jamie Foxx, and Eddie Murphy playing a pop singer based on Diana Ross. To promote the film, Beyoncé released Listen as the lead single from the soundtrack album to I in April 2007, Beyoncé embarked on the Beyoncé Experience, her first worldwide concert tour. Visiting 97 venues and grossed over $24 million. Beyoncé conducted pre-concert food donation drives during six major stops in conjunction with her pastor at St. John's and America's Second Harvest. At the same time, Birthday was re-released with five additional songs, including her duet with Shakira Beautiful Liar. 2008 to 2012, I am. Sasha Fierce and Four. A woman stands looking out to a crowd. Beyonce performing during the I am. Tour. I am. Sasha Fierce was released in November 2008 and formally introduced Beyonce's alter ego Sasha Fierce to IT was met with mixed reviews from critics, but sold 482,000 copies in its first week, debuting atop the Billboard 200 and giving Beyonce her third consecutive number one album in the US. The album featured her fourth UK number one single If I Were a Boy and her fifth US number one song Single Ladies, Put a Ring on It. Dot. Halo achieved the accomplishment of becoming her longest-running Hot 100 single in her career. Halo's success in the U.S. helped Beyoncé attain more top 10 singles on the list than any other woman during the 2000s. The music video for Single Ladies has been parroted and imitated around the world, spawning the first major dance craze of the internet age according to the Toronto Star. At the 2009 MTV Video Music Awards, the video won three categories, including Video of the Year, its failure to win the Best Female Video category, which went to American singer-songwriter Taylor Swift's You Belong With Me, led to Kanye West interrupting the ceremony and Beyoncé improvising a representation of Swift's. Award during her own acceptance speech to I in March 2009, Beyoncé embarked on the I Am tour, her second headlining worldwide concert tour, consisting of 108 shows, grossing $119.5 million. Beyoncé further expanded her acting career, starring as blues singer Etta James in the 2008 musical biopic Cadillac Records. Her performance in the film received praise from critics, and she garnered several nominations for her portrayal of James, including a Satellite Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress and an NAACP Image Award nomination for Outstanding Supporting Actress. Beyoncé donated her entire salary from the film to Phoenix House, an organization of rehabilitation centers for heroin addicts around the country. Beyoncé starred opposite Ollie Larder and Idris Elba in the thriller, Obsessed. She played Sharon Charles, a mother and wife whose family is threatened by her husband's stalker. The film received negative reviews from critics and did well at the U.S. box office, grossing $68 million to $60 million more than Cadillac Records on a budget of $20 million. At the 52nd Annual Grammy Awards, Beyoncé received 10 nominations, tying with Lauryn Hill for most Grammy nominations in a single year by a female artist. Beyoncé went on to win six of those nominations, breaking a record she previously tied in 2004 for the most Grammy Awards won in a single night by a female artist with six. In 2010, Beyoncé provided guest vocals on Lady Gaga's single, Telephone, the song topped the U.S. pop songs chart, becoming the sixth number one for both Beyoncé and Gaga, tying them with Mariah Carey for most number ones since the Nielsen Top 40 Airplay chart launched in 1992. Beyoncé announced a hiatus from her music career in January 2010, heeding her mother's advice to live life, to be inspired by things again, 
During the break, she and her father parted ways as business partners. Beyoncé's musical break lasted nine months and saw her visit multiple European cities, the Great Wall of China, the Egyptian Pyramids, Australia, English music festivals, and various museums and ballet performances. Eat, Play, Love, a cover story written by Beyoncé for Essence that detailed her 2010 career break, won her a writing award from the New York Association of Black Journalists. The upper body of a woman is shown as she sings into a microphone. Beyoncé's performing during her four intimate nights with Beyoncé concert residency in August 2011. On June 26, 2011, she became the first solo female artist to headline the main pyramid stage at the 2011 Glastonbury Festival in over 20 years. The performance was lauded, with several publications noting an ascension in Knowles' capabilities as a live performer. Other publications discussed the polarized attitude of the UK music establishment in response to a black woman performing on the same stages and to the same crowd sizes that were past reserved for legacy rock acts. Her fourth studio album Four was released two days prior in the US.4 sold 310,000 copies in its first week and debuted atop the Billboard 200 chart, giving Beyoncé her fourth consecutive number one album in the US. The album was preceded by two of its singles Run the World, Girls, and Best Thing I Never Had. The fourth single Love on Top spent seven consecutive weeks at number one on the Hot R&B slash Hip Hop Songs chart, while peaking at number 20 on the Billboard Hot 100, the highest peak from the album. In late 2011, she took the stage at New York's Roseland Ballroom for four nights of special performances. The four intimate nights with Beyoncé concerts saw the performance of her four album to a standing room only. On August 1, 2011, the album was certified platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America, RA. Having shipped 1 million copies to retail stores. By December 2015, it reached sales of 1.5 million copies in the U.S. The album reached 1 billion Spotify streams on February 5, 2018 making Beyoncé the first female artist to have three of their albums surpass one billion streams on the platform. In June 2012, she performed for four nights at Revel Atlantic City's Ovation Hall to celebrate the resort's opening, her first performances since giving birth to her daughter. Activism A woman performing using a microphone Beyoncé has conducted several fundraising and donation campaigns during her tours. In 2013, Beyoncé stated in an interview in Vogue that she considered herself to be a modern-day feminist. She would later align herself more publicly with the movement, sampling We Should All Be Feminists, a speech delivered by Nigerian author Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie at a TEDx talk in April 2013, in her song Flawless, released later that year. The next year she performed live at the MTV Video Awards in front a giant backdrop reading feminist, her self-identification incited a circulation of opinions and debate about whether her feminism is aligned with older, more established feminist ideals. Annie Lennox, celebrated artist and feminist advocate, referred to Beyoncé's use of her word feminist as feminist light. Adichie responded with her type of feminism is not mine, as it is the kind that, at the same time, gives quite a lot of space to the necessity of men. Adichie expands upon what feminist light means to her, referring that more troubling is the idea, in feminism light, that men are naturally superior but should be expected to treat women well and we judge powerful women more harshly than we judge powerful men. And feminism light enables this. Beyoncé responded about her intent by utilizing the definition of feminist with her platform was to give clarity to the true meaning behind it. She says to understand what being a feminist is, it's very simple. It's someone who believes in equal rights for men and women. She advocated to provide equal opportunities for young boys and girls, men and women must begin to understand the double standards that remain persistent in our societies and the issue must be illuminated in effort to start making changes. She and Jay-Z also topped the highest-paid celebrity couple list, with combined earnings of $107.5 million. Beyoncé is one of the wealthiest musical artists. As of 2018, Forbes calculated her net worth to be $355 million and in June of the same year, ranked her as the 35th highest-earning celebrity with annual earnings of $60 million. 
This tied Beyonce with Madonna as the only two female artists to earn more than $100 million within a single year twice.As a couple, Beyonce and Jay-Z have a combined net worth of $1.16 billion. In July 2017, Billboard announced that Beyonce was the highest-paid musician of 2016, with an estimated total of $62.1 million. By December 2023, Forbes estimated Beyonce's net worth to be $800 million. In 2023, the couple bought a house in Malibu, California, designed by the architect Tadao Ando, for $200 million. It established a record for the most expensive residence sold in the state of California. Legacy Main Articles, Cultural Impact of Beyoncé and Destiny's Child Legacy A woman is shown leaning back and singing into a microphone, surrounded by smoke. Beyoncé performing during her I Am Tour in 2009. Beyonce's success has led to her becoming a cultural icon and earning her the nickname Queen Bey. Constance Grady wrote for Vox The transformation of Beyonce from well liked pop star to cultural icon came in three phases, punctuated by the self titled Beyonce album of 2013, 2016's Lemonade, and 2018's Homecoming concert at Coachella. In The New Yorker, music critic Jody Rosen described Beyoncé as the most important and compelling popular musician of the 21st century, the result, the logical end point, of a century plus of pop she topped NPR list of the 21st century's most influential women musicians, James Clear, in his book Atomic Habits, 2018, draws a parallel between Beyoncé's success and the dramatic transformations in modern society. In the last 100 years, we have seen the rise of the car, the Airplane, the television, the personal computer, the internet, the smartphone, and Beyoncé. The Observer named her Artist of the Decade, 2000s, in 2009. Writing for Entertainment Weekly, Alex Susskind opined that Beyoncé was the decade's, 2010s, defining pop star, stating no one dominated music in the 2010s like Queen Bey, explaining that her songs, album rollouts, stage presence, social justice initiatives, and disruptive public relations strategy have influenced the way we've viewed music since 2010. Based on Billboard rankings of chart success and sales, Beyoncé was ranked ninth on the top R&B and hip-hop artists of the 2010s decade chart, behind the likes of Drake, Rihanna, Chris Brown, Nicki Minaj, Post Malone, The Weeknd, Kendrick Lamar and Lil Wayne in ranks 1-8, through eight, respectively. British publication Enemy also shared similar thoughts on her impact in the 2010s, including Beyoncé on their list of the 10 artists who define the decade. 464, in 2018, Rolling Stone included her on its. Millennial 100 List Music critics have often credited Beyoncé with the invention of the staccato rap singing style that has since dominated pop, R&B, and rap music. Lakin Starling of The Fader wrote that Beyoncé's innovative implementation of the delivery style on Destiny's Child's 1999 album The Writings on the Wall invented a new form of R&B. The staccato rap singing style continued to be used in the music industry in the late 2010s and early 2020s. Aaron Williams of Uprox described Beyoncé as the primary pioneer of the rapping style that dominates the music industry today, with many rappers implementing Beyoncé's rap singing. Michael Eric Dyson agrees saying in 2019 that Beyoncé changed the whole genre and has become the godmother of mumble rappers who use the staccato rap singing cadence. Dyson added, she doesn't get credit for the remarkable way in which she changed the musical vocabulary of contemporary art. The following year, she received the Legend Award for Outstanding Contribution to the Arts at the World Music Awards and Career Achievement Award at the Los 40 Music Awards. In 2010, she received the Award of Honor for Artist of the Decade at the NRJ Music Award. At the 2011 Billboard Music Awards, Beyoncé received the inaugural Billboard Millennium Award. Beyoncé received the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award at the 2014 MTV Video Music Awards and was honored as Honorary Mother of the Year at the Australian Mother of the Year Award in Barnardo's Australia for her humanitarian effort in the region and the Council of Fashion Designers of America Fashion Icon Award in 2016. In 2019, alongside Jay-Z, she received Glad Vanguard Award, which is presented to a member of the entertainment community who does not identify as LGBT but who has made a significant difference in promoting equal rights for LGBT people. In 2020, she was awarded the BT Humanitarian Award. Consequence named her the 30th best singer of all time. 
Beyonce has won 32 Grammy Awards, both as a solo artist and member of Destiny's Child and the Carters, making her the most honored individual by the Grammys. She is also the most nominated artist in Grammy Award history with a total of 88 nominations. Single Ladies, Put a Ring on It, won Song of the Year in 2010, while Say My Name, Crazy in Love, and Drunk in Love have each won Best R&B Song. Dangerously in Love, Birthday and I Am. Sasha Fierce have won Best Contemporary R&B Album, while Lemonade has won Best Urban Contemporary Album. Beyoncé set the record for the most Grammy Awards won by a female artist in one night in 2010 when she won six awards, breaking the tie she previously held with Alicia Keys, Nora Jones, Alison Krauss, and Amy Winehouse, with Adele equaling this in 2012. Beyoncé has won 29 MTV Video Music Awards, making her the most awarded artist in Video Music Award history. She won two awards each with the Carters and Destiny's Child, making her lifetime total of 29 VMAs. Single Ladies, Put a Ring on It, and Formation won Video of the Year in 2009 and 2016, respectively. Beyoncé tied the record set by Lady Gaga in 2010 for the most VMAs won in one night for a female artist with eight in 2016. She is also the most awarded and nominated artist in BT Award history, winning 29 awards from a total of 60 nominations, the most awarded person at the Soul Train Music Awards with 17 awards as a solo artist and the most awarded person at the NAACP Image Awards with 24 awards as a solo artist. Additionally, Beyoncé is the most awarded artist at the NAACP Image Awards with 22 awards and the BET Awards with 32 awards. Following her role in Dreamgirls, Beyoncé was nominated for Best Original Song for Listen and Best Actress at the Golden Globe Awards, and Outstanding Actress in a Motion Picture at the NAACP Image Awards. Beyoncé won two awards at the Broadcast Film Critics Association Awards 2006, Best Song for Listen and Best Original Soundtrack for Dreamgirls, Music from the Motion Picture. According to Fuse in 2014, Beyoncé is the second most award-winning artist of all time, after Michael. Jackson Lemonade won a Peabody Award in 2017 in 2022. Be Alive was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Original Song, the Critics' Choice Movie Award for Best Song, and the Golden Globe Award for Best Original Song. She was named on the 2016 BBC Radio for Women's Hour Power list as one of seven women judged to have had the biggest impact on women's lives over the past 70 years, alongside Margaret Thatcher, Barbara Castle, Helen Brooke, Jermaine Greer, J. Ben Desai and Bridget Jones. She was named the most powerful woman in music on the same list in 2020 and the same year. Billboard named her with Destiny's Child the third greatest music video artist of all time, behind Madonna and Michael Jackson. On June 16, 2021, Beyoncé won the award of Top Touring Artist of the Decade, 2010s, at the Polestar Awards. On June 17, 2021, Beyoncé was inducted into the Black Music and Entertainment Walk of Fame as a member of the inaugural class. Business and Ventures In 2010, Beyoncé founded her own entertainment company Parkwood Entertainment, which formed as an imprint based from Columbia Records. The company began as a production unit for videos and films in 2008. Parkwood Entertainment is named after a street in Houston, Texas where Beyoncé once lived, with headquarters in New York City. The company serves as an umbrella for the entertainer's various brands in music, movies, videos, and fashion. The staff of Parkwood Entertainment have experiences in arts and entertainment, from filmmaking and video production to web and fashion design. In addition to departments in marketing, digital, creative, publicity, fashion design and merchandising, the company houses a state-of-the-art editing suite, where Beyoncé works on content for her worldwide tours, music videos, and television specials. Parkwood Entertainment's first production was the musical biopic Cadillac Records, 2008, in which Beyoncé starred and co-produced. The company has distributed Beyoncé's albums such as her self-titled fifth studio album, 2013, Lemonade, 2016, and The Carters, Everything is Love, 2018. Beyoncé has signed other artists to Parkwood, such as Chloe X. Halley, who performed at Super Bowl 53 in February, 2019. On February 20, 2024, Beyoncé launched Secret, an extension of the lessons learned from her first job in her mother's Houston hair salon and her own hair journey, and an act of service for others looking for relief. In April 2024, Beyoncé shared her wash day ritual using different products from the Secret line. Endorsements and Partnerships 
Beyonce has worked with Pepsi since 2002 and in 2004 appeared in a gladiator-themed commercial with Britney Spears, Pink, and Enrique Iglesias. In 2012, Beyonce signed a $50 million deal to endorse Pepsi, the Center for Science and the Public Interest, Spin It, wrote Beyonce an open letter asking her to reconsider the deal because of the unhealthiness of the product and to donate the proceeds to a medical organization. Nevertheless, NetBase found that Beyonce's campaign was the most talked about. Endorsement in April 2013, with a 70% positive audience response to the commercial and print ads. Beyoncé has worked with Tommy Hilfiger for The Fragrance's True Star, singing a cover version of Wishing on a Star and True Star Gold. She also promoted Emporio Armani's Diamonds Fragrance in 2007. Beyoncé launched her first official fragrance, Heat, in 2010. In February 2011, Beyoncé launched her second fragrance, Heat Rush. Beyoncé's third fragrance, Pulse was launched in September 2011. In 2013, the Mrs. Carter Show limited edition version of Heat was released. The six editions of Heat are the world's best-selling celebrity fragrance line, with sales of over $400 million. The release of a video game star power, Beyoncé was cancelled after Beyoncé pulled out of a $100 million deal with Gate 5, who alleged the cancellation meant the sacking of 70 staff and millions of pounds lost in development. IT was settled out of court by her lawyers in June 2013, who said that they had cancelled because Gate 5 had lost its financial backers. Beyoncé also has had deals with American Express, Nintendo DS and L'Oreal since the age of 18. In March 2015, Beyoncé became a co-owner, with other artists, of the music streaming service title. The service specializes in lossless audio and high-definition music videos. Beyoncé's husband Jay-Z acquired the parent company of title, Aspiro, in the first quarter of 2015. Including Beyoncé and Jay-Z, 16 artist stakeholders such as Kanye West, Rihanna, Madonna, Chris Martin, Nicki Minaj and more, co-own title, with the majority owning a 3% equity stake. The idea of having an all-artist-owned streaming service was created by those involved to adapt to the increased demand for streaming within the current music industry. In November 2020, Beyoncé formed a multi-year partnership with exercise equipment and media company Peloton. The partnership was formed to celebrate homecoming season in historically black colleges and universities, providing themed workout experiences inspired by Beyoncé's 2019 homecoming film and live album after 2020's homecoming celebrations were cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. As part of the partnership, Beyoncé and Peloton are donating free memberships to all students at 10 HBCUs, and Peloton are pursuing long-term recruiting partnerships at the HCBUs. Gwen Bethel Riley, head of music at Peloton, said, When we had conversations with Beyoncé around how critical a social impact component was to all of us, it crystallized how important it was to embrace homecoming as an opportunity to celebrate and create dialogue around black culture and music, in partnership with HBCUs. Upon news of the partnership, a decline in Peloton's shares reversed, and its shares rose by 8.6%. In 2021, Beyoncé and Jay-Z partnered with Tiffany & Company for the Company's About Love campaign. Beyoncé became the fourth woman, and first black woman, to wear the 128.54 carat Tiffany yellow diamond. The campaign featured a robin egg blue painting by Jean-Michel Basquiat titled Equals Pie, 1982. Both Beyoncé and the brand faced significant backlash for the campaign, as the Tiffany yellow diamond, which was discovered in the Kimberley Diamond Mines in South Africa in 1877, is classified as a blood diamond and viewed as a symbol of British colonialism over Africa. Fashion Lines Beyoncé and her mother introduced House of Duran, a women's fashion line, in 2005. The concept is inspired by three generations of women in their family, with the name paying tribute to Beyoncé's grandmother, Agnes Duran, a respected seamstress. According to Tina, the overall style of the line best reflects her and Beyoncé's taste and style. Beyoncé and her mother founded their family's company Beyond Productions, which provides the licensing and brand management for House of Duran, and its junior collection, Duran, House of Duran pieces were exhibited in Destiny's child shows and tours during their Destiny-fulfilled era. The collection features sportswear, denim offerings with fur, outerwear and accessories that include handbags and footwear, and are available at department and specialty stores across the U.S. and Canada.
In 2005, Beyoncé teamed up with House of Brands, a shoe company, to produce a range of footwear for House of Durand. In January 2008, Starwave Mobile launched Beyoncé Fashion Diva, a high-style mobile game with a social networking component, featuring the House of Durand collection. In July 2009, Beyoncé and her mother launched a new junior apparel label, Sasha Fierce for Durand, for back-to-school selling. The collection included sportswear, outerwear, handbags, footwear, eyewear, lingerie and jewelry. IT was available at department stores, including Macy's and Dillard's, and specialty stores Jimmy Jazz and Against All Odds. In May 2010, Beyoncé teamed up with clothing store CNA to launch Duran by Beyoncé at their stores in Brazil. The collection included tailored blazers with padded shoulders, little black dresses, embroidered tops and shirts, and bandage dresses. In October 2014, Beyoncé signed a deal to launch an activewear line of clothing with British fashion retailer Topshop. The 50 to 50 venture is called Ivy Park and was launched in April 2016. The brand's name is a nod to Beyoncé's daughter and her favorite number four, for in Roman numerals, and also references the park where she used to run in Texas. She has since bought out Topshop owner Philip Green from his 50% share after he was alleged to have sexually harassed, bullied, and racially abused employees. She now owns the brand herself. In April 2019, it was announced that Beyoncé would become a creative partner with Adidas and further develop her athletic brand Ivy Park with the company. Knowles will also develop new clothes and footwear for Adidas. Shares for the company rose 1.3% upon the news released by end December 2019. They announced a launch date of January 18, 2020. Beyonce uploaded a teaser on her website and Instagram. The collection was previewed on the upcoming L January 2020 issue, where Beyonce is seen wearing several garments, accessories, and footwear from the first collection. In February 2023, the Wall Street Journal reported that the line was struggling financially with revenue falling by more than 50% over the past fiscal year to $40 million, well short of the company's $250 million projected forecast in March 2023, it was announced that Beyoncé and Adidas reached a mutual decision to end their partnership. Later in March 2023, Olivier Rousteing, the creative director of Balma, announced that he and Beyoncé collaborated on a couture collection complete with 16 looks corresponding to the 16 tracks on her album Renaissance. This Renaissance Couture collection marked the first time that a black woman oversaw the development of a collection from a Parisian couture house. Philanthropy See also, Bay Good. A woman is surrounded by several others, all behind a piece of white tape. Beyoncé, Center, and her mother, Tina, left at the opening of the Beyoncé Cosmetology Center on March 5, 2010. In 2002, Beyoncé, Kelly Rowland and Tina Knowles built the Knowles Rowland Center for Youth, a community center in downtown Houston. After Hurricane Katrina in 2005, Beyoncé and Rowland founded the Survivor Foundation to provide transitional housing to displaced families and provide means for new building construction, to which Beyoncé contributed an initial $250,000. The foundation has since expanded to work with other charities in the city and also provided relief following Hurricane Ike three years later. Beyoncé also donated $100,000 to the Gulf Coast Ike Relief Fund. In 2007, Beyoncé founded the Knowles Temenos Place. Apartments, a housing complex offering living space for 43 displaced individuals. As of 2016, Beyoncé had donated $7 million for the maintenance of the complex. After starring in Cadillac Records in 2009 and learning about Phoenix House, a non-profit drug and alcohol rehabilitation organization, Beyoncé donated her full $4 million salary from the film to the organization. Beyoncé and her mother subsequently established the Beyoncé Cosmetology Center, which offers a seven-month cosmetology training course helping Phoenix House's clients gain career skills during their recovery. In January 2010, Beyoncé participated in George Clooney and Wyclef Jean's Hope for Haiti Now, a global benefit for earthquake relief telethon, donated a large sum to the organization, and was named the official face of the limited edition Council of Fashion Designers of America, CFD, Fashion for Haiti D shirt. In April 2011, Beyoncé joined forces with U.S. First Lady Michelle Obama and the National Association of Broadcasters Education Foundation to help boost the latter's campaign against child obesity by reworking her single Get Me Bodied. Following the death of Osama bin Laden, Beyoncé released her cover of the Lee Greenwood song God Bless the USA as a charity single to help raise funds for the New York Police and Fire Widows and Children's Benefit Fund. 
Beyoncé became an ambassador for the 2012 World Humanitarian Day campaign donating her song I Was Here and its music video, shot in the UN, to the campaign in 2013. It was announced that Beyoncé would work with Salma Hayek and Frida Janini on a Gucci Chime for Change campaign that aims to spread female empowerment. The campaign, which aired on February 28, was set to her new music. A concert for the cause took place on June 1, 2013, in London. With help of the crowdfunding platform Catapult, visitors of the concert could choose between several projects promoting education of women and girls. Beyoncé also took part in Miss a Meal, a food donation campaign, and supported Goodwill Industries through online charity auctions at Charity Buzz that support job creation throughout Europe and the U.S. Beyoncé and Jay-Z secretly donated tens of thousands of dollars to bail out Black Lives Matter protesters in Baltimore and Ferguson, as well as funded infrastructure for the establishment of Black Lives Matter chapters across the U.S. before Beyoncé's Formation World Tour show in Tampa. Her team held a private luncheon for more than 20 community leaders to discuss how Beyoncé could support local charitable initiatives, including pledging on the spot to fund 10 scholarships to provide students. With financial aid Tampa Sports Authority Board member Thomas Scott said, I don't know of a prior artist meeting with the community, seeing what their needs are, seeing how they can invest in the community. It says a lot to me about Beyoncé. She not only goes into a community and walks away with money, but she also gives money back to that community. In June 2016, Beyoncé donated over $82,000 to the United Way of Genesee County to support victims of the Flint water crisis. Beyoncé additionally donated money to support 14 students in Michigan with their college expenses. In August 2016, Beyoncé and Jay-Z donated $1.5 million to civil rights groups including Black Lives Matter, Hands Up United and Dream Defenders, after Hurricane Matthew. Beyoncé and Jay-Z donated $15 million to the Usain Bolt Foundation to support its efforts in rebuilding homes in Haiti. During Hurricane Harvey in August 2017, Beyoncé launched Bay Good Houston to support those affected by the hurricane in Houston. The organization donated necessities such as cots, blankets, pillows, baby products, feminine products and wheelchairs, and funded long-term revitalization projects. On September 8, Beyoncé visited Houston, where she sponsored a lunch for 400 survivors at her local church, visited the George R. Brown Convention Center to discuss with people displaced by the flooding about their needs served meals to those who lost their homes, and made a significant donation to local causes, Beyoncé additionally. Donated $75,000 worth of new mattresses to survivors of the hurricane. Later that month, Beyoncé released a remix of J Balvin and Willie Williams' Mi Gente, with all of her proceeds being donated to disaster relief charities in Puerto Rico, Mexico, the U.S. and the Caribbean after Hurricanes Harvey, Irma and Maria, and the Chiapas and Puebla earthquakes. In April 2020, Beyoncé donated $6 million to the National Alliance in Mental Health, UCLA and local community-based organizations in order to provide mental health and personal wellness services to essential workers during the COVID-19 pandemic. Baygood also teamed up with local organizations to help provide resources to communities of color, including food, water, cleaning supplies, medicines and face masks. The same month, Beyoncé released a remix of Megan the Stallion Savage, with all proceeds benefiting Bread of Life Houston's COVID-19 relief efforts, which includes providing over 14 tons of food and supplies to 500 families and 100 senior citizens in Houston Weekly. In May 2020, Beyoncé provided 1,000 free COVID-19 tests in Houston as part of her and her mother's hashtag I Did My Part initiative, which was established due to the disproportionate deaths in African-American communities. Additionally, 1,000 gloves, masks, hot meals, essential vitamins, grocery vouchers and household items were provided. In July 2020, Beyoncé established the Black-Owned Small Business Impact Fund in partnership with the NAACP, which offers $10,000 grants to Black-Owned Small Businesses in need following the George Floyd protests. All proceeds from Beyoncé's single Black Parade were donated to the fund. In September 2020, Beyoncé announced that she had donated an additional $1 million to the fund. As of December 31, 2020, the fund had given 715 grants to Black-owned small businesses, amounting to $7.15 million donated. In October 2020, Beyoncé released a statement that she has been working with the Feminist Coalition to assist supporters of the NSARS movement in Nigeria, including covering medical costs for injured protesters, covering legal fees for arrested protesters, and providing food, emergency shelter, transportation and telecommunication means to those in need. 
Beyonce also showed support for those fighting against other issues in Africa, such as the Anglophone crisis in Cameroon, Shut It All Down in Namibia, Zimbabwean Lives Matter in Zimbabwe, and the rape national emergency in Liberia. I end December 2020, Beyonce donated $500,000 to help alleviate the housing crisis in the U.S. caused by the cessation of the eviction moratorium giving $105,000 grants to individuals and families facing foreclosures and evictions. Hair Care Brand In February 2024, on the launch day of Beyoncé's secret hair care brand, she established an annual grant in collaboration with Big Good. This is an effort to provide financial support to cosmetology students and professional hairstylists within the beauty industry. A yearly $500,000 is funding cosmetology school scholarships and salon business grants across five cities chosen for their large, diverse community of hairstylists Atlanta, Chicago, Houston, Los Angeles, and Clementon.